Hello folks. In the past few days, once again, we've seen the United States at war with itself. The Supreme Court overturned Roe v Wade, which was expected because the judgment had already been leaked to Politico months ago. The US Constitution had provided a right to privacy that protected a person's right to choose whether to have an abortion. But in Justice Samuel Alito's reasoning, he called Roe v Wade an abuse of judicial authority and successfully argued the right to abortion is not expressly mentioned in the Constitution. That's why it was overturned. Abortion is no longer a nationwide right, and so the power to ban the procedure goes back to the states. That's how it works here in Australia as well. Abortion is protected at state and territory level, although we still don't have a constitutional right to it. But while our laws are more or less the same across the country, in the US, different states have different laws. For example, Louisiana, Kentucky and South Dakota immediately outlawed abortion after last week's ruling. But in the more liberal states such as California or New York, the right to abortion is still protected by the state. What this means is that people who decide to have an abortion, they can still go and get the procedure done but would have to travel to a different part of the country, which can come at great expense. And that is a big factor in this debate, which I'll get to later on. In the meantime, Republicans reveled in the victory. We believe that every precious child is born and unborn is the sacred gift from God. I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. But while the Republicans reveled, not so for so many women who feel a palpable sense of fury and depression over the decision. It's a reminder of how easily rights can be stripped away. In recent polls, 60% of Americans support continuing to make abortions legal. Michelle Obama gave some strong thoughts on the weekend. She said she was heartbroken for the people around the country who just lost the fundamental right to make informed decisions about their bodies. This is not an easy decision for everyone to undertake. It's this huge moral argument. And it's been my personal view that men should stay out of this debate. But seeing as we're here, I will say a woman should have the right to decide what she does with her body. Two weeks ago, I was critical of the government Qatar about its treatment of women. And so similarly, I think any law which bans the practice of abortion is archaic. Reasons being, what if a woman falls pregnant after being sexually assaulted or raped or accidentally falls pregnant and cannot afford to raise the child, therefore opening up a real possibility that that baby will be abandoned? It will be an election issue, and the president has urged people to act despite his previous opposition to abortion. Well, I, I do not view abortion as a, uh, um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy. It's a realization of an extreme ideology and a tragic error by the Supreme Court, in my view. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. Personal freedoms are on the ballot. The right to privacy, liberty, equality, they're all on the ballot. From 1920 to 1933, the U.S. had prohibition. It was a nationwide ban on alcohol, which the US president, Herbert Hoover, called a great social and economic experiment. But it ultimately failed because booze and all that came with it was forced underground and ultimately led to the rise of organized crime. It clogged up courts and jails. The Supreme Court decision is obviously different, but my point is this won't be the end of abortion in states where it's now illegal or will become illegal. It'll just drive it underground for those who can't afford it, like what happened in the 1970s, and quite possibly result in dangerous procedures where lives could be put at risk. Watch for the increase in drugs not approved by the FDA. Aid Access is an international organisation that prescribes the abortion pill to women in the United States, even if their state law prohibits it. Pills can be brought for roughly $100, filled from a pharmacy in India, and then mailed to an address in the United States. As historian Michael Lerner said of prohibition, watch out for solutions that end up worse than the problems they set out to achieve. Thanks for watching. To support this channel, please like, share and subscribe below, and I'll see you next week.